So let's take a look at this. And we'll start off with a couple quick questions just to make sure we're all on the same page. Because one of the things that we're trying to emphasize in, in the new Common Core and some of the things as far as what good mathematicians or good thinkers do is they're able to explain things. So there's a lot of vocabulary that we just kind of take for granted and we think, oh, well, everybody knows what that is, but we may not quite have the same terminology. We don't have to have real formal definitions, but in your own words, somebody raise their hand and tell us what an equation is. I mean, we all know what it is. We know how to solve equations, but if you had to describe what an equation was to somebody, what would you say? Raymond answers all the time. Somebody help him out. Noah. Um, set of numbers with variables that are used to solve. Okay, set of numbers with some variables that's used to solve things. Okay. What's what's the key word or the the key root in that word equation? Equal. Okay. So it's got to have an equal sign in it, right? Okay. So we're going to say something like this. We're going to say two expressions set equal. And when we say expressions, we're usually talking about algebraic expressions. So we're talking about expressions with variables in them. That's what uh, Noah was talking about. So it's got some numbers, it's got some variables in it, and it's got to have an equal sign. It's got to say this, these two things need to be equal. So if we solve an equation, what does that mean we do? You solve an equation, what are we doing, Tammy? Very good. So she said find number, or I'm going to put numbers that make... The equation, what did you say again, Tammy? Make the equation true, okay? And there's the key right there. We want to make the equation a true equation. We want to make the equation a true equation, okay? Now, this entire section reviews a bunch of different equations that we need to know how to solve, okay? And I'm hoping you've seen all these before, okay? The first thing it starts out with is what we call a linear equation, okay? So a linear equation, usually our favorite variable is an x. So usually as just a plain old x. Now if it has a plain old m or a plain old y or a plain old t in it, we'd still call that a linear equation. Okay? So that means the highest degree is 1. It would be like x to the first or t to the first or m to the first or something like that. Okay, and then let's just run through. These are kind of like the rules of algebra. These are legal moves that we can make when solving an equation. Okay, so the first thing says blank one or both sides by combining terms, removing parentheses, etc. So if you combine terms, remove parentheses, if you do stuff like that, what are you doing? What would go in the blank here? Simplify. Okay, one of the best things you can do is simplify things to begin with. Okay. Make it a little bit easier to read. Okay, then it says blank or subtract, blank or divide, both sides by the same quantity. Yep, okay, so add or subtract, multiply or divide by the same thing on both sides. Okay, and notice that it just says quantity, so sometimes we might uh, add or subtract the same expression, multiply or divide by the same expression, something like that. Okay, and then it says blank the two sides. This doesn't happen very often, but it's kind of important. Let's look at the example here. It says x equals 4 would be the same as 4 equals x. So what that means is we can switch or swap the two sides. Sometimes that's a convenient thing to do. For some reason, we get used to having the x's on the left side and then the answer on the right side. Variable over here, number answer on the other side. That's totally fine if you like to do that. Okay, But the reason that's a legal move, and I call this a pancake flip, if you take this and pick it up and just flip it over, the 4 switches sides with the, with the x, um, and the equal sign, it doesn't change at all. We talked last week about inequalities, you'll remember. Okay, Those would have to flip if you uh, flip that over. Okay, So we'll just go around really quickly. Brandon, what do you do to solve part A here? 
Very good. We're going to add 2, so that's going to be 3x equals 14, and then he said we divide by 3. Okay, so the answer here is x equals 14 thirds. We don't freak out that four, 3 doesn't go into 14. Okay, we would reduce that fraction if it could reduce. We don't change it to a mixed number. Don't change it to 4 and 2 thirds or anything like that. Okay, you just want to leave it like this. If we were to plug this in, it makes the equation true. It's always a good idea to just kind of have some idea what you're looking for or make sure that your answer works. If I plug it in here, I have 3 times 14 thirds minus 2. Cancel the 3s. 14 minus 2 is 12. Does it work? It's definitely the solution to that equation. Okay? Alexis, what do we do to solve this one? Minus 1, so that's a 35, and then what? Divide by negative 5. All we have to do is make sure that we're careful here. Positive divided by a negative, so that's going to be a negative 7. Does it bother anybody that we wrote the negative 7 equals x rather than x equals negative 7? If it did, take the whole thing and just flip it, and there's your answer. Okay? Any questions? Okay, those should be pretty easy. You might see one of those on the test, maybe with a little bit more complicated side, maybe some parentheses to remove. You've got some of those to practice. Okay, the next thing. What is a rational equation? we got a root word here that we've talked about several times, and we know what an equation is. So what is a rational equation? Yeah. Okay, an equation... with, so w with a slash with, fractions. Okay, now here's the cool thing. We just wrote in P4 at the very end of that when we were solving that, that problem with uh, John and Michelle, we wrote a rational equation because it was an equation that had fractions in it. Okay? Now, the great part about this is, so I've got examples of rational equations. Okay? When you have a rational equation, you can do something to make it much, much simpler. Lynn? Find the common denominator for all of them. And what do you mean cross it out? Okay, so if you made them all have the same denominator, you could just worry about the numerators. Is that what you're saying? Yep. Okay, but there's, there's a way that we can do that. Okay, that's even e easier than making them all have the same denominators. Does anybody know what it is? Let's take a look at this one right here. Okay, if I just had x minus 1 equals 1, that would be a piece of cake. I can solve that all day. It's the denominators that make that difficult. Okay, but what if I did this? What if I take both sides and I multiply it by something that will cancel off a 2, a 4, and a 3? So as long as I do the same thing to both sides, multiply both sides by the same number or expression, it should cancel those off. So what is a number that will cancel off a 2, a 4, and a 3? 12 will work. 24 will work. Which should we use? You should use 12. Use the smallest one. So if I multiply both sides by 12, it'll cancel off each one of those. Okay? So what we call that is we call that clear the fractions. Okay? We can also call it clear the denominators. Okay? And what we do is we multiply by something that will cancel off the denominators. So when we say clear the fractions or clear the denominators, what we mean is multiply both sides by something that will cancel off both of the denominators. Now, why can I do that on this problem? But if I were left with this problem, can I get rid of the denominators here? Why can I get rid of the fractions here and not get rid of the fractions here? I'm stuck working with fractions on that problem there. There's nothing I can do about it. So what allows me to get rid of the fractions here and make it easier to solve? Anybody know why you can do that? Why on this one do you have to get a common denominator? So I'd have to do 2x over 4 minus 1 over 4 and get 2x minus 1 over 4. That would be the answer there. I'm stuck with fractions. And on this one, I can multiply through and I get, let's see, the 2 would cancel with the 12. I'd get a 6x. 
the 4 would cancel with the 12, I'd have a minus 3. And the 3 would cancel with the 12, I'd end up with a 4. And now I've got this nice equation to solve here, a nice linear equation. What allows me to get rid of the fractions on this problem, but I can't get rid of the fractions here? Yes, Tammy. It does have to do with the one-third. What separates the one-third from these other two guys right here? The equals. Okay. What are we doing here? We're doing the same thing to both sides. So it's this property right here. The fact that as long as we do the same thing to both sides, in this case, multiply both sides by the same number, in this case 12, that's what allows me to get rid of the fraction. So if you're working with a problem with fractions in it that is an equation, you can get rid of the fractions. If it doesn't have an equal sign, you can't get rid of the fraction. So please don't mistake that. Don't multiply this one. Okay. If you were to do this, that's wrong. Okay. If you were to do this, that's still wrong. Okay. It's the fact that it's an equation that allows us to get rid of those fractions. Okay. And then the cool part is this. In one step, we've got an equation to solve that doesn't have any fractions in it. Every single term in the problem to begin with had a fraction in it. In one step, we've got an equation that doesn't have a fraction in it. So I add 3 to both sides. I get 6x equals 7. So I get uh, x equals 7, 6. And that right there is the answer. Okay? Okay, let's take a look at the next one. Ideas there? Just deal with the numerator. If the denominators are the same, then the numerators would have to be the same. But it would be a good idea if we went ahead and cleared the denominators, cleared the fractions. So let's multiply both sides by x minus 3. If I multiply this one by x minus 3, the x minus 3 cancels, so I'm just left with an x squared. If I multiply this one by an x minus 3, remember, I'm doing the same thing to both sides. I end up with a 9. Now, how do I solve that? Huh? Take the square root. The easiest way to solve that is take the square root. Now, when you put a square root in a problem, what else do you have to put in there? No? A plus or minus. So the answer here is x equals plus or minus 3. And if I plugged in a negative 3 and squared it, would I get the 9 that I need? Yes, I would. What about a positive 3? Yes, I would. Okay, now, we're going to stare at this for just a second. And I'm hoping, based on yesterday's and the day and last week's discussion on P4, somebody says, hey, wait a minute. Hop, are you going to say, hey, wait a minute? Sure he is. He is now, right? Raymond, are you going to say, hey, wait a minute? Okay, can somebody else say, hey, Mr. Laws, there's something going on here, and tell us why there's something going on here. You want to try it, Tony? In, into the denominator. Or are you saying distribute through? Yeah. Okay. So let, let, me, let me address that concern then. If I were to multiply x minus 3 with x squared and put it over x minus 3 and then do the same thing on the other side, I can cancel that with that, and that with that, and there's my x squared here and my 9 here. Okay, so that's okay. Jordan, what's what's the issue here? Very good. Okay, excellent. Take a good look at this. Remember, there are three functions, three operations that typically have domain issues. You've got to be careful when you're working with them. What's the first one? Zero in the denominator of a fraction. Division. If you have division, you can't divide by zero. What's the next one? Even roots, even roots, division and even roots. What's the last one? <laughs> Logarithms. Okay, we have division in these problems. You better be careful. Look at it at the very beginning. So before you even start solving it, look at it and say, you know what? I can tell you what wouldn't work. So let's look at this one right here. What could X definitely not be? It can't be three. So do I keep both an those answers or do I throw one of them out? I throw one of them out. The only answer on this one is negative 3. That's the only one that will work because 3 isn't in the domain of the original problem. Okay? Are there any questions about that? Yeah? So with that, is the only way that you can notice 
that is by already taking out the main or is there? Yeah, you should look at it to begin with and figure out what the domain is, which is what we're going to do on this one right here, okay? So we'll do this one and then we'll uh, maybe answer these last two questions if we have a second. So I'm going to change colors here so we don't get confused. Can you tell me what numbers in no way, no world would they work in this equation? Okay, Z uh, zero and I heard the other one, negative one. Okay, those two won't work. So we know that from the beginning. Okay. This is a nasty looking equation. What makes it really ugly is the denominators. So I need to multiply by something that will cancel off an x, an x plus 1, an x plus 1, and an x. Hope, can you tell me what we need to multiply by? Okay. We do need an x minus 1. We're going to definitely have to multiply by x minus 1. Brandon, can you tell us what else we'll need to multiply by? An x. Okay. I have to cancel off an x, so I better multiply by an x. I have to cancel off an x plus 1. Whoops. Sorry. x plus 1. Is that better? All right. Sorry about that. Okay. I have to cancel off an x plus 1, so I better multiply by an x plus 1. Do I need another one? Like, do I need to square this? No, because it's going to get distributed through to each term, so that's enough. And do I need another x? Nope, one of them's enough. Okay, this would be called the least common multiple of the denominators. Okay, so that's going to do it. So let's take this first one. If I multiply these two with this one right here, the x will cancel with the x. The x plus 1 will cancel with the x plus 1. What's left of this term once I multiply? Just an x. It's awesome. Okay. Let's do the next one. Change colors here. The x plus 1 will cancel with the x plus 1. I'm left with 7x. Look how awesome this is. Okay. When I multiply here, what cancels? The x. So I'm left with 3 parentheses x plus 1. Make sure you put that in parentheses, and then that's something that you can solve. Okay? All right. We'll pick up right there tomorrow. Finish solving that. Please make sure you've read um, P5. We'll finish this. Did I answer your question? Did, did we get, was it 47? 37.